Okay guys, so I know this is not who you are used to seeing in these videos, but today uh, Rev Hiker and I, like the Taiga, decided to do a video collaboration where we're mixing it up and I'm going to be doing a video on my, what I think and what I like to use for an EDC pack and kind of how I set it up. And hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and hopefully Rev Hiker will include a link to my video, or my, not my video, but my channel in the description below so you guys can go check out, see more of what my channel's about. But um, if you guys wanna see his video, uh, definitely make sure to go over to my channel and hopefully a link will be in the description below to where you can go see that. Anyways guys, without any further ado, Please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to this channel and my channel over on my side of things. And if you guys want to see more Alaskan awesomeness, definitely go check my channel out. But anyways, let's get into how I set up my pack and what my EEC pack is. Okay guys, so like I mentioned today, we are going to be taking a look at my kind of EDC setup for a pack. Now generally, if you guys are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I don't generally run packs. So I'm kind of doing this if I ran a pack because I know there's a lot of people out there in the EDC community that they aren't like me where they can carry everything on their on their actual body and for me it's kind of a rare thing because I run pretty much every single day I run Carhartt cargo pants so the cargo Carhartt pants or sorry the car the Carhartt pants that car ah, the cargo pants that Carhartt makes they are very spacious and they're very big and if you guys haven't already seen I've done a review on them I really love them that's generally what I use for my everyday carry so that's what that's kind of why I can carry a lot of stuff but for people that that's not as practical for uh, that's kind of why I'm making this video so that I can give you guys an idea of if you can't or if you cannot run that type of system easily that this is a kind of system that would be really effective for you and you might really look at doing so so as to start off with the actual pack what it is is of course for those who don't know this is a Maxpedition a Maxpedition Jumbo Versa pack and this has kind of been a tried and true pack for me I've used it not only for EDC but also a lot for bushcrafting and overall I think for an EDC pack the reason why I really enjoy this pack in particular is there's a ton of storage and cargo options that this pack has and at the same time it also being a Versa pack you can run it or you run it on just this sling and this grab handle and you can pull it right in front of you and it's actually designed so that it can sit like this when it's slung over your shoulder so that if you need to get into it for whatever reason whether you want your water bottle or you want something in this zipper pouch or whatever you really want to get into it has a lot of <clears throat> you can just get right into it without even having to have the pack leave your body and it's all very easy to do in addition what I like about this pack is the very large water container or water kind of storage unit here and so it allows you to carry actually quite large containers this is a 38 ounce Nalgene that I'm running in it right now and so you can carry pretty large uh, containers of water I like how it'll allow you to carry that much water that way that you don't really have to fill up on water when you're out and about you can just start off your day with a good amount of water and continue to work on it throughout the day so <clears throat> So those are kind of some of the top reasons why I really like this setup. And for my EDC, uh, integrating over to a, ba a bag like this, it's not completely filled out. So like this pouch here, I didn't put anything in this pouch because I just don't really carry enough stuff. I guess if, if I was really gonna run this system, like every single day, I would probably turn something like this pouch into a snacks pouch where I'd probably run like cliff bars, maybe some other different types of snacks. I have done that in the past with my uh, bushcrafting setup when I set this up for bushcraft. And so I kind of like to use this little pouch over here for snacks, which would be a nice thing to have so that you have your water and your food on you. You don't have to stop, buy lunch, you don't have to buy water throughout your day. It kind of helps cut down your cost of operations on a daily level. So aside from that, now actually getting into what I have filled this pack up with, let's jump into that. 
So starting off with this big pouch, and I personally run my gun actually on body, but as another option, I decided I would throw my gun in here, and so I'm just running a Glock 19. This is just sitting in a holster. It could really, in all honesty, just actually sit in here, and I do know that uh, Maxpedition, if you wanted to, uh, they run a, they kind of have like a hook and loop field uh, holster for specifically set up for their backpacks and Versa packs so that your gun can sit in here so it's retained. I just threw it in a holster just so that it kind of stayed retained and it wasn't going to be bumped around. And the holster kind of helps keep it staying upright so that the gun's not like slanted off to the side like that or like that. So anyways, this is just a G19, and I think the G19, and even the Glock 21, I think if I were to run a big pack like this, I would definitely at least carry something like a Glock 19, but probably end up running something like a Glock 17, or a 21, or a 20, one of the full-sized Glocks, because there's a lot of room in this uh, big zipper compartment for a big handgun, like a full-sized handgun. And when it's like this, uh, it's completely concealed. No one can know that you're carrying it or no one has to know you're carrying it, but in a moment's notice, you can easily have it ready. So I really do enjoy that part and would definitely recommend if you guys can, if you're in a place where you can run a Glock or sorry, just a handgun in general, I would definitely recommend trying to run a handgun in this pouch back here. <coughs> so going over to this pouch here, I just kind of have some I actually don't have anything too much in here, just a multi-tool is all I decided to throw in this pouch. And this is just a Leatherman Blast, but a Leatherman Surge, a Leatherman Charge, ALX, uh, I have all of them. They would all fit really well into this little pouch here. Um, the other two are in use, so the Charge, ALX, and the uh, Surge are actually in use, so I can't throw them in here, but any of those three types of tools would work really well the Blast, Charge ALX, or Surge, or even a Wave would fit really well in this little pouch. And I like having just a dedicated multi-tool in a kind of EDC pouch like this, so that <clears throat> you have the ability to do work or have that versatility when you need it. And I kind of like having it sitting up here so it's a nice, easy to grab place. As you guys will notice, I have a couple knives in this, but they're behind this flap, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get to. So as to this little pouch here, I kind of dedicated this to kind of like mini survival kind of stuff. So in here, I'm running a Zippo lighter, and then I'm running <coughs> a container of matches, and then I'm also running some gauze in here. I could also throw some band-aids in here if I really wanted to. And in that way, <coughs> I have just a little bit of medical and uh, just survival kind of fire starting stuff in case I need it. And once again, keeping it on the outside so that this stuff is really easy to grab. I don't have to go rummaging through my backpack to find stuff. So the next pouch is like this kind of uh, pouch here. And I'm just carrying a bandana in here, nothing fancy. And that fits really well. And once again, it's in a nice and pretty easy to grab place. As for this pouch, I kind of keep this pouch here kind of dedicated to my admin pouch. And so that's primarily because of one, it's easier to get to than the main pouch because on a Jumbo Versa pack, you kind of have this rain protection <coughs> almost fly right here. And this kind of uh, protects everything on the inside from getting wet. But at the same time, it's also an extra level of you have to open this thing up to actually get in here. So I don't really like that system as much for when I'm trying to get to things like pens, wallets, flashlights I want to just be able to get to them so I kind of set this pouch here or this pocket here as my admin pouch so you guys will notice I have my wallet here this is a Trayback Summit then and I have that just on one of these kind of uh, I don't know what this is called but this kind of like lanyard if you will that's built into the actual uh, pocket itself then next to that I have a flashlight this is a Nova T2 and then I have next to that are a just standard black Sharpie. And then next to that, I have a Meritac Embassy pen, and this is in brass. So I have my pen, my Sharpie, my flashlight, and my wallet, all just in there. And once again, it's pretty easy to get to. I like keeping some of this stuff, especially like my wallet, in a harder to get to place as well. I like to keep it on this kind of lanyard because it helps protect it. It's not just gonna fall right out of here. It's on a lanyard, as you guys can see, so it's not just gonna rattle off and fall off and get lost. 
So I like being able to keep it like that. That's <laughs> So now moving over to the full size pack. And I also forgot to mention this pocket right here. There's a little slip pocket right here. I also have that empty. I don't really know what I would use that for in an EDC situation, but having pockets is always nice in an EDC situation. <coughs> so setting up, or the setup in here is a little bit more advanced. I don't have anything. So basically the way that this uh, main compartment is set up there's three different things. There's just the main compartment and then there's two different moderate sized pockets on both sides. And so for the side that you guys can most easily see this side, I'm running a full size, or maybe not full size, but a kind of smaller fixed blade. This is the Pull Force November 1. Just for having it in here, it's a nice fixed blade. Could use it for survival or defense if I have to. And I kind of wanted to also show the ease at which you can carry really quite large stuff, like a full-sized handgun, a full-sized fixed blade, or a smaller full-sized fixed blade. Obviously, it's not gigantic. And then also, I'm running a Zero Tolerance 042 carbon fiber. And I also wanted to pick out this knife because, one, I really like this knife. But secondly, this is a really big knife. Like, overall size when it's open is around the same size as the Pull Force November one so you can carry a really big knife and I know in a lot of you guys especially if you're wearing jean pockets and or if you have jeans and you're just having like smaller jean pockets this knife is gonna be a really hard knife to carry however if you do incorporate it into a system like running it in a pack like this you can have a lot larger folding knife for whatever you need then next to that <clears throat> I also have <clears throat> a, a medical kit. This is basically an Altoids kit that I retrofitted to have a whole bunch of medical contain or medical equipment in. So I have a whole bunch of band-aids and this is why I don't have, when you guys saw in this flap up here, in case you guys were wondering why I didn't have band-aids in there, it's because I'm running my band-aids and a whole bunch of different things like butterfly closures and stuff like that all in this little Altoids kit. And I like to run them in their own little kit just so that I have all the smaller band-aids and stuff like that in one place. And I also like to have it in a pretty life-proof container and inside where I know it's going to stay pretty dry because I don't want any of that getting wet. So the next to that, I'm just rocking some paracord if I need paracord for whatever reason. You might be quite surprised. It sounds a little funny. But like, if you go throughout your daily life, you might be surprised how many times paracord can be really useful, especially in any emergency situations. If you need to just, not necessarily like a critical or a medical emergency, but if say you stop by like Home Depot and you're like, oh, I need to lash this onto my truck or something like that. It's actually really handy to have some paracord just on you. So the next to that, <clears throat> going back to medical stuff, um, here I have an EpiPen, so this is just an EpiPen, and I have this set up because I actually do EDC it on my neck generally, but if I was running an EDC pack, I would definitely just throw it in my EDC pack. So this is just an EpiPen, just for whatever it needs. Uh, if someone has an allergic reaction, it's really bad. Um, <clears throat> it can be a really, really nice thing to have just on your body. So next to that, lastly, I have a buterol and an inhaler, and I actually kind of need that a little bit because of my cough and just my overall sickness, and so it can be really nice for me, and also there's been a handful of times when I've had to give this inhaler to other people, I've been having a really tough time breathing, and it's kind of gotten not quite life-threatening, but almost life-threatening, and so it's handy to just have a couple things on you for other people if you need to give them to other people for whatever reason. <coughs> so anyways, guys, that's basically all I carry, EDC. I think I went over all my pouches, pockets, and everything like that. And of course, I just have a few patches thrown on here uh, that I've gotten over the years. And so, yeah, I don't think there's much any much more to say about this. I don't have anything running on this little H&K clip or anything really running on the front of this strap. Though I definitely could add stuff if I had to. But overall, that's basically how I would run 
a EDC pack if I was running one. Like I said, luckily due to what I wear in particular, I can EDC the stuff that I need or most of this stuff here um, without a pack and so I'm pretty fortunate with that and so yeah. But I know, like I said, a lot of people out there don't run the same kind of clothes that I wear in particular or don't necessarily feel comfortable running neck knives and stuff like that. So they are more apt to picking up an EDC pack like this. And if you are one of those people, then I would definitely encourage checking out the Maxpedition Jumbo Versa pack. And <clears throat> definitely, this is how I would set mine up. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As Like I said, guys, please don't forget to go over to my channel and please, <coughs> please subscribe and check out Rev Hiker's video on my channel. And <clears throat> hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. As always, God bless and I'm out.